Excellent. What's up guys, welcome back to my coverage of CES 2017. I am here at the ASUS Suite at Trump Tower. Uh, but first, a big thanks to my sponsors for CES 2017, Gigabytes, OCZ, a Toshiba company, as well as Deepcool. A big thanks to them and their links are down in the video's description. Now, there's tons of stuff at the ASUS booth as always, so uh, let's get right into it. Let's start with some peripherals. Uh, three mice, this is ROG Strix, and this is ROG Strix, and this is just ROG. This is the Gladius 2. Uh, it is a unique design in that it has swappable arm round switches that have upgraded a lot of stuff. Uh, they have actually have new switches with 12,000 DPI sensitivity and the ability to swi switch them out, giving you up to 50 million clicks per switch. And of course, it has a R RGB lighting and it will work with the ASUS Aura software. There's an ROG Strix Evolve over here, um, which is ambidextrous, as you can hopefully see. And you can actually remove uh, each of these click panels, the left one and the right one, and it comes with options for left-handed or right-handed people because the travel distance on your left and right click are different and they want to make sure that they have accommodated either one. Next, we have the ROG Strict Impact. Impact, this one is uh, light and fast and stealthy, and it's going to be uh, a little bit less, of course, than the ROG Gladius 2. Very nice little mice. So speaking of ASUS Aura Sync, that's the software for RGB lighting control that they've been working on and developing, I'd say over the past year, year and a half since the RGB thing kind of took off. So this system they have set up here is a really good example of how it works. Coordination of many different parts internally as well as the bonus features. So right there you have G-Skill Trident Z memory with RGB lighting control, coordinating with the motherboard to make everything look. It's an RGB lightning storm, as far as I can tell is the effect that they're going for right now. Uh, you also have, of course, RGB LEDs on the motherboard itself. You have RGB LEDs on the back plates of both of the uh, ASUS ROG graphics cards there, which I believe are Strix 1080 uh, Gaming X2s. Uh, and then also you have RGB strips on the case on two sides over here. And then they took and went outside the back of the case with this little cable and they connected it up to this wall. This wall of ROGness going on there. So you have coordination of not, not only all the RGB lights inside the system, but you can also go out and like decorate your desk or the wall or something like that. And then of course, if you get the right peripherals from ASUS, like monitor, keyboard, mouse, that also have ASUS ROG uh, Aura support, or lighting, Aura lighting support, then you can coordinate everything with the ROG -ness. I really want to quickly point out the, this Magnus right here, because it's a new product that uh, ASUS hasn't really taken on before. It's a microphone. Uh, so features here are studio-grade studio condenser capsules. You actually get three of them, uh, whereas you would typically only get one with a mic of this quality. Price point they're looking at is going to be around $150-ish, dollars, $125 to $150. And uh, it's got USB connectivity. It's got individual controls here, so you can manually uh, pipe things up or down if needed on the fly. And uh, again, support for the ASUS ROG Aura lighting coordinate everything with ROG lights. Now continuing with some ROG stuff, uh, here's a motherboard that JJ did not have available when, when we did our video on the Z270 launch, which you guys should check out by the way. Uh, this is the Maximus 9 Extreme. So I have three motherboards here I want to show you really quick. The Maximus 9 Extreme has all of the extreme type level features that you would expect from their previous extreme level boards. So. Uh, lots of I.O. stuff there and monitoring control and all that good stuff. USB 3.1 header, that's really cool. But you're probably noticing this water block. It's actually a mono block right here at the top. Uh, Asus designed it, BitPower actually, Bits Power actually manufactures it. It includes really cool features that I haven't seen in a mono block, uh, such as these little rings right here, which detect if there's a leak and uh, you can set off a warning or tell it to shut down the system or a delayed shutdown, you have options in the uh, software. This little cover right here is for M.2, so you can put an M.2 drive in there if you got one that gets too hot. Drastically reduces the temperature of uh, like a really fast M.2 NVMe SSD. And then you have crazy support for fans. You actually have 12 fan headers, like four up there and then another like eight down here. And they're all grouped very specifically, so you can connect up lots of radiators and have them all in a group and that kind of thing. Uh, there's other features here as well, but I'm running out of time. So let's move over here to this long line of motherboards, which uh, lots of them I actually already talked about, but I didn't talk about this one. This is the Apex, and this is kind of the offshoot of the Extreme. Uh, the Extreme was previously, you know, 
the top end, best of the best, and that still is the case. The Apex will split off to be a bit more geared towards really high-end and enthusiast overclocking. Now, that's not to say you couldn't get the Apex and use it for other tools or features or, you know, just build a nice system out of it. But you'll note, for example, two dim slots instead of four. Uh, all of this is to reduce signal noise that might potentially uh, reduce your chances of get, getting really high-end overclocks. They have this crazy thing right here, which is actually an M.2 uh, riser, riser adapter card that they fit into a dim slot, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but gives you some M.2 support without having it uh, have potential noise or signal uh, interference with the rest of the board. And they've gone with other features like uh, IC chips in there that are much better for uh, high-end overclocking. So if you're going to see like world records for KB Lake being broken uh, by ASUS our, uh, overclocking team, it's probably going to be done on this board. Of course, on the right side, you have uh, you know voltage read points and all that type of stuff. You can individually turn off certain features of the board. Uh, and also, if you haven't noticed, this board has a kind of a cool design too. It is ATX, but it has sort of an X design. So you might notice the PCB kind of pops out there a little bit uh, on the corners, which is also kind of unique. And then, of, of course, again, full our, our RGB support and a little panel down here that you can kind of customize. You could replace that and put your own logo on it or something like that uh, if, if you wanted to. All right, so what we have here is an ITX board and a micro ATX board. Uh, the ITX board is fairly new. Uh, the mini micro ATX board uh, is actually already available, so check those out. These should all be available if they're not out now. They should be available by the end of the month, uh, with possible exception of that extreme board. Uh, now the ITX here, uh, I just I just think they did a great job on. They have answered the uh, call that many of us have had to give us an ITX board that also has color neutrality for the most part. Uh, they've also included an M.2, which actually is installed via this little guy right here. Uh, which is cool because it gives you the ability to have some additional cooling on it. M.2 will slot right in there. Active heatsink for it, so keep your M.2 NVMe drive nice and cool. Uh, and it fits on the front of the board right there. You'll notice there are some silver accents, but other than that, no real colors. There is integrated Wi-Fi, and uh, then there are some LEDs on the board, but you can disable those. And if you do want to have, again, that RGB support, although there are no, no active RGB lights on this board, there is an RGB LED header over there, so you could integrate that uh, with your case, and then, of course, coordinate it with the lights in your case or other uh, ASUS RGB products if you wanted to. And then we have the Strix Z270G Gaming Micro ATX board, I don't have a lot of information about this board, but I just wanted to show you guys that it exists, maintaining a lot of the uh, design and uh, other features that we've seen with a lot of these boards, RGB support, all that good stuff, um, and it looks cool. And I like Micro ATX. Here's a cool little product. It's called the ROG Rapture. It's actually a router, a quad-core router. Uh, features Game Boost and gaming port technology. Uh, this, again, coming out in Q2. They're not quite finished designing it. Uh, it's going to have support for really high-speed um, storage. It's either going to be integrated or available via connectivity via USB, um, but it's going to give you uh, just ultra-fast storage. You could potentially like use this as a NAS repla replacement or something like that. But uh, tri-band, AC Wi-Fi, 8 gigabit LAN ports uh, for wired devices and two ultra-fast USB 3.0 ports, and it looks like an upside-down spider. Monitors, these are exciting. Actually, the one in the middle is really cool. Uh, it's a new industrial design, and this is part of the ASUS uh, well, it's not a ProArt actual series monitor. It is the MX38VQ. It is 37.5 inches diagonal from there all the way down to there. Uh, it is a, the resolution is crazy. It's 3840 by 1600, which is not 21, not 21 by nine. It's actually a bit taller than 21 by nine. The 4K version of 21 by nine would be 3840 by 1440. This is again, 3840 wide. Uh, 1600 tall, so you get a bit of extra vertical space. It's just a beautiful looking monitor. The uh, panel is sourced from LG. Uh, also includes 8 watt stereo speakers, Sonic master, master technology, so you can actually route your audio, like say you have a laptop that doesn't have very good audio quality, you can route it through the monitor and then plug your headphones in there and you'll get a much better uh, audio experience. That's really cool. Again, coming in Q2. Over here we have a 4K HDR display, which just looks beautiful and ASUS is still in search of incredible. This is a 32 inch 4K HDR quantum dot monitor. So uh, the color space reproductivity on this monitor is absolutely insane. Uh, you get 85% of uh, Rec 2020 support, which is um, like the widest color spectrum standard that's kind of been standardized, but usually it's only used in really high-end stuff. 99.5% of Adobe though, 95% of DCI-P3, 100% sRGB. Uh, just a beautiful looking monitor. Pretty cool looking stand down there as well. 
and it's 4K. Uh, Pre-calibrated uh, with ProArt calibration that it includes uh, hardware calibration tools in there as well. Again, coming in Q2. And finally, I can't leave without talking about this new monitor. Can you tell which one is the better one? These uh, demos are supposed to be synced, but I turned them on at the wrong time. But you can kind of get a, an impression back and forth. Obviously, you're not watching this on an HDR monitor, but the one on the right is HDR. Uh, the new one, ROG Swift PG27UQ. Uh, the one on the left is last year's model. Also a very nice monitor, of course, but uh, this one on the right is better. We have 4K support. It is an ROG series monitor, so you have cool little extras, like, you know, it, it uh, fires the ROG uh, Asus the ROG logo down uh, at the ground underneath the monitor's display. Uh, 144 hertz rapid refresh rate, NVIDIA G-Sync support, of course, 4K HDR, 3840 by 2160, uh, and it's an IPS panel, so you should have better color depth theoretically than you know a, a trashy old TN panel or something like that. Uh, DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.0 compatible, and I think this is a very, very nice monitor. I don't know how much it's gonna cost though. Now, I said I was going to finish with that monitor, but uh, JJ insisted that I should talk to you guys about this laptop, too. Let's start with the bad part right off, off the gate. It's a $6,000 laptop. No apologies. It costs $6,000. It must be worth it. Uh, what they've done here, if you didn't, couldn't already tell, is, of course, integrated their liquid cooling. Uh, it's hot swappable. Well, it's not hot. You can hot swap it? Hot yeah, swap it? All right. It's hot swappable liquid cooling with that unit in the back. So you can run it air-cooled with just what's here or, uh, you know, keep that unit at home. And when you're ready to game, plug it in there. 18-inch display, IPS with G-Sync, dual GTX 1080s in there, full-size ones. Uh, it also has, uh, what's the CPU? It's uh, an i7 latest generation KB Lake unlocked. Okay, yeah. unlocked. So it's like a 7700K? Yeah, kind of. It's kind of like a 7700K. It's some mysterious version of the 7700K that JJ seems very very mysterious about. Uh, mechanical RGB yeah. backlit keyboard. Uh, obviously, it's a, it's a fairly substantial laptop, being that it's more of a desktop replacement made for uh, gaming, and I imagine you could do lots of content creation and that kind of thing on this as well. Uh, and of course, full R Asus uh, R R ROG or RGB support. ROG or RGB. I've been repeating that statement over and over again. So, guys, if you want, uh, if you don't like desktop computers, but you want one, but you want it in a laptop, and you have $6,000, the ROG GX800 is absolutely insane. So there you have it, guys, my breathless coverage of the ASUS suite. And I swear, I've only talked about like a third of the things they have. They have a complete other room that they wanted to show us, but we ran out of time. So let me know what you think of this video. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. A big thank you, of course, to my sponsors, Kyle, as well as Gigabyte, OCZ, Toshiba, and Deepcool. Thanks, you guys. More coverage of CES 2017 coming very soon. We'll see you next time.